guys, welcome back to an episode of Steve Modder, and yes, we are here with that age-old question. Do you buy a discrete video card that's looking cool in your system, or do you go ahead and spend a little bit more money on your CPU with a better onboard video card? And well, once in the day when it used to be onboard video cards were silly and you should just buy discrete ones and they were much better, that was the case. But as technology is rapidly improving, we are seeing onboard video cards getting a lot better than those standalone ones. So what do we use for today's testing? Well, the actual price point we tried to target was $150 on the CPU and $50 on the GPU as kind of the $50 GPU range is kind of there but not always the best option for your CPU setup. Then if you want to go ahead and buy a better onboard video solution you generally combine those two totals for about $200, $210 depending on what you're buying and we chose the AMD A10 7850K. Now the reason why we didn't buy an extra CPU for the standalone CPU test was a few reasons. Number one, some of our games don't actually support dual core processors which is what you're kind of going to be looking at for that price but you do have to remember hyper threading on the Intel side is there that might help but again some games do not support that and really well we did clock the A10 down a little bit so we could go ahead and get about the same performance as a lower performing chip. Now in terms of video card yes we did go with the GeForce GT 630 for about $50 and well why the 630 well for a few reasons and well why not the 700 or 900 series you're probably asking well number one the 700 series is the actual amount of pricing and the actual performance you get out of them are roughly the same. They're really just kind of rebrands in a way if you do look at them. And well, we had one of these in house, so I thought, well, why not just run with it? And not the 900 series because at the time of recording, there is no low end 900 series cards out yet. So that kind of makes it impossible for me to run that. Now, before you start yelling at me saying the 630 is old and clearly out of date and rah, 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 and you know, 700 series is much better, you do need to take into consideration as well that most of the lower end cards are generally all spec the same and between generations isn't really that much. What you'll be benefiting from is different styles of RAM or different coolers and well different power consumption and things along those lines rather than raw performance they'd actually get out of it. Some generations is a bit of a bump but really between the six and 700 series yes you do get power saving those kind of things but really performance isn't really gonna take much of a hit and also too we could pick it up for $50 so I was like yeah why not. Now for testing today, we ran our standard set of games on both the AMD A10 as well as the 630 and we maxed them out at full resolutions and full settings, all those kind of things like we normally do, as well as we chucked the system 8GB of RAM from our 980X test bench. Now if you're wondering why we maxed out all the games, we actually did it for, well, a couple reasons. Number one, we want this to be able to easily comparable to all our other videos. So say if you take away this video, say we'll get, you know, for example, 20 FPS in a certain benchmark in a certain game. and you want to compare that to say a 670 or well what else have we reviewed the 9 970 for example if you want to compare it to that you can easily go ahead and compare numbers because we use the same monitor almost the same test bench and really everything but the CPU or the video card is the only thing that's actually different so really that's why we did it and also too we wanted to again give the systems that we tested the worst case scenario so with that being said let's get into our results and well, our results was a lot surprising than I thought. When I actually thought about doing these tests and started running them, I thought I could actually do the tests on all of this. Originally, I was going to go with a low-end AMD A4 or something like that class of CPU until I realized most of my tests wouldn't actually run on a dual-core processor, hence why we had to use the AMD A10 as the CPU control. Now, in terms of testing the CPU and the GPU onboard option was actually one of the better solutions, leaving the 630 with quite a lot of issues, to be honest with you. In terms of testing, either games launched up and started running our benchmark but then froze halfway through and crashed, or they just flat out would not launch on the 630 as soon as we bumped up the resolution. So I had to pull that card out, put in another card or just run onboard video to actually go ahead and turn down the graphics before anything would actually load properly and the game would stop freezing. So I was quite disappointed in that term that I can't even get numbers to you in terms of what it performed, but yeah, it just froze and I couldn't actually do anything about it. Now in saying that, that was with the game's max out. If you're going to be doing this at home, chances are you're not going to be going ahead and smashing these systems as hard as possible because, well, it's your own system and you'll actually be wanting to play these games. Now, I did go ahead and lower the resolution and lower everything in terms of settings to sort of low to medium settings, though I didn't actually record them. I was just playing through some games because I got bored for a little bit and I did find it actually a playable experience. I managed to get both options, whether it be low-end CPU and low-end GPU or both high-end CPU and high-end GPU, all those kind of things. I managed to get them at very decent 
issues and frame rates upwards of 60 FPS to be more clear. And that is really coming down to optimization. If you're just going to max out all your settings, you're not going to get a good experience on any of these and you'll be needing to look into the higher end 980s and 780s in terms of video cards and really these kind of setups are designed for sort of lower end gaming. Now in terms of recommendations, in terms of actually setting this up, I guess we better get on to the actual final question which one is actually better? Well, looking at the graphs, you would have to say that the better solution is the better onboard video and better CPU. Why? Well, you also not only get better onboard video while you're using it, you'll also be getting a more powerful CPU. Then down the line, once you save up a few more dollars, you can go ahead and chuck in an even better video card to give you a really good overall experience having a strong CPU and a strong video card. Now, lots of people do come to me asking, should I buy this video card? And I go and look at it and it's only about 50 or 60 bucks. And I do have to say, you're not really going to be getting that much out of it. You might see a small bump over it depending on what processor and what video you're already running, but honestly, don't go spending your money on these lower end video cards. Now, in terms of actual tests, again, I could have gone a little bit better and put in a 2133 kit of RAM to get us better onboard video, so you do need to keep that in mind. If you are running onboard video, make sure you get supporting parts to actually go ahead and increase the FPS. But if you are going to go down my recommendations, I do recommend spending about the $150 to $200 range for best bank for your buck in terms of video cards and again I do recommend doing this where you go ahead and maybe run that onboard video for a little while and then go ahead and buy a better video card but it is your choice so go ahead and like or dislike the video accordingly let me know what you think about low-end video cards in general do you think they should just go away and also to let me know what you would do would you go ahead and buy the higher-end CPU and just run with onboard video for a while and then buy a high-end video card or go ahead and buy both at the same time and just live with lower frame rates I'll see you guys next time for another video. Don't forget to drop us a sub if you like what we're doing and I'll see you guys next time for another video.